Hi, I'm Professor Baldwin, and today I'm going to teach you how to find the zeros of polynomials. A zero or a root of a polynomial is the solution to f of x equals zero. This is going to give you your x-intercepts. Zeros of a polynomial can be real or imaginary numbers, and if they're real zeros, they can be rational or irrational. Here we're given a polynomial f of x, and if we factor it, we end up with a factored form, and we see that we have six zeros. Each of these factors gives us a zero. We would use that zero product property that says take a factor, set it equal to zero, and solve. So this first factor has a zero of x equals one. You do that for each of these six factors and you get these six zeros. Notice that we have some real zeros, some non-real zeros, some rational and some irrational zeros. Now, what if you can't easily factor a polynomial? That's where this rational zero theorem comes in handy. It tells you how to take a polynomial and figure out potential zeros. Then you use those zeros in synthetic division and use that to help you factor. We're going to use this example, x cubed minus x squared minus 4x minus 2, to explain how to use that rational zero theorem. So notice that this polynomial p of x cannot be factored, not even with grouping. So we're going to use the rational zero theorem to help us figure out potential zeros. Now, the first step is to identify p. p is your constant term, which here is negative 2. And we want to know the factors of negative 2. Those would be negative 1 times a positive 2, or a positive 1 times a negative 2. Then we need to find the value q. Q is your leading coefficient. So make sure your variables are in descending order, then look at the leading term and find the coefficient. Here, the leading coefficient is one. The factors for one are one times one and negative one times negative one. We don't wanna write any of these factors multiple times. Next, you're gonna take each of these factors and write them as p over q. So I like to start with the first denominator. So I'm going to put each of these p's over that 1. That'll give us negative 1 over 1, 2 over 1, 1 over 1, and negative 2 over 1. Next, we're going to use the denominator of negative 1 and put each p over. So negative 1 over negative 1. 2 over negative 1, 1 over negative 1, and negative 2 over negative 1. Then we want to simplify each of these and make sure we don't have any duplicates. The first is negative 1, we have a 2, a positive 1, a negative 2, positive 1, a negative 2, a negative 1, and a positive 2. Notice that we have lots of duplicates. So if we eliminate our duplicates, our possible zeros would be negative 1, 1, 2, and negative 2. Now that we know our possible zeros, we're going to pick 1 and use synthetic division to see if it is a 0. Now, I tend to stick with x plus 1 as a factor and use the 0, negative 1. I like to use a 0 of negative 1 or positive 1 just because the math is a little bit easier. Now, for synthetic division, remember you write those coefficients for each of your terms. You draw that bar, put the box for your remainder, and then we can start the synthetic division. First step is bring down that first coefficient. Then we multiply. We add vertically. Then we multiply. We add vertically, we multiply, lastly we add vertically, 
We ended up with a zero in the remainder spot. That means that negative one is a zero, so x plus one is a factor. So we can write x plus one as our factor. And then we can use the result from our synthetic division to write that other polynomial that's remaining. And that would be x squared minus 2x minus 2. Now, notice that this is not a linear factor. We still have a polynomial left. We know it's not linear because of that x squared. So we need to factor this remaining polynomial. Well, if you look at it, it doesn't clearly factor. So our next step in order to find the zeros would be the quadratic formula. So let's identify a, b, and c for that polynomial. That's one, negative two, and negative two. And let's go over and do the quadratic formula. So the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2 times a. Let's simplify. We have 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 plus 8 divided by 2. So we have 2 plus or minus the square root of 12 over 2. We know the square root of 12. Well, 12 is 4 times 3, so the square root is 2 square root of 3. Let's break this up into two terms. So 2 over 2 plus or minus 2 square root of 3 over 2. We can simplify, and we have x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 3. So remember, this is 1 plus the square root of 3 and one minus the square root of three. So we have identified our zeros now. Our zeros from our synthetic division, negative one, and then from using the quadratic, one plus the square root of three, and one minus the square root of three. Okay, on this next page we have a list of some rules and theorems. These are all to help you determine the number of zeros your polynomial may have and also the type. So the first theorem, the fundamental theorem of algebra, this is pretty much telling you that if you have a polynomial of degree n that is greater than or equal to one, then f of x, your polynomial, is going to have at least one complex zero. So if you have at least a degree one polynomial, you'll have at least one zero. The second one, the linear factorization theorem, is telling you that if you factor into linear factors, so each of those factors, the variable has an exponent of one, then Complex numbers are not necessarily unique. Third, we have the number of zeros of a polynomial. If you have a polynomial with degree n greater than or equal to one with complex coefficients, then you're going to have exactly n complex zeros provided that each zero counts the multiplicity. So if you factor a perfect square trinomial and get x plus two squared, we expected that polynomial, which is a quadratic, to have two zeros. Because the multiplicity of this zero is two, there are two, they're just the same zero. What I think is probably the most helpful is this conjugate zeros theorem. If you know that you have a zero of a plus bi, then the conjugate a minus bi is also a zero. So if you see an imaginary number as a zero, you know that its conjugate will be your other zero. Let's look at this example where we need to find the zeros when we're given just one zero. So notice our polynomial has degree three. Because degree three, this cubed in the front, we expect 
three zeros. Well, we have one zero, four plus i. This is an imaginary number, so we expect its conjugate for minus i to also be a zero. We actually, we know it. We don't expect it. We know it to also be a zero. So we're going to use our synthetic division to see what other zeros we can get. So let's start, start with the given 4 plus i, and let's use synthetic division. So identify those coefficients. These are big coefficients. And put our remainder box. We want to bring down that first coefficient, and then we multiply. 3 times 4 plus i is 12 plus 3i. We add vertically. Remember, you add the real values together, and you would add the imaginary values together. So here we have the negative 28 plus the 12, which is a negative 16 plus 3i. On the side, you might want to multiply, because you have to multiply that 4 plus i times negative 16 plus 3i. You should get negative 64 minus 4i plus 3i squared. Remember, i squared is a negative 1. So we have negative 64 minus 4i minus 3 or negative 67 minus 4i. Add vertically again, and you get 16 minus 4i. Multiply here again, 4 plus i times 16 minus 4i. And I'll tell you that that simplifies down to a 68. Oops, I forgot my sign on this coefficient. That should be a negative 68 up there. Because now when we add, we get a 0. We verified that 4 plus i is a 0. Even though we are told that, this is helpful because it gives us that next polynomial to divide with. So our next step is to take our conjugate, 4 minus i, and use synthetic division with this result and see if we can get another 0 out of that, right? Because we have 2. We're trying to find what that third one is. So bring down that coefficient, the 3, multiply. We have 12 minus 3i. That gives us a negative 4 here. Negative 4 times 4 minus i is negative 16 plus 4i. Those simplify down to 0. And this 3 minus 4 that we have left translates to 3x minus 4. That's our last 0. So 3x minus 4 equals 0. Solve for x. We have 3x equals 4, or x equals 4 thirds. So our zeros are the 4 plus i we were given, the conjugate 4 minus i, and then this value we just found with our synthetic division of 4 thirds. OK, what if you're asked to work in reverse? So you're given the zeros, but you're asked to find the polynomial that those zeros belong to. Well, let's look at what a zero actually means. So if we have a zero of 6i, this is saying that x equals 6i. If we subtract the 6i from both sides, we get the factor x minus 6i equals 0. So that's our first factor, x minus 6i. Well, we can use that conjugate 0 theorem, and we know that x plus 6i is going to be another 0 for us. Then we have this 4 fifths is a 0. So x equals 4 fifths. Multiply both sides by 5 to get rid of that fraction. 5x equals 4. And then subtract 4 from both sides. And you get a 0 um, 
the zero of four fifths gives you the factor of five X minus four. So here we have those three zeros, which is perfect with a degree three. We expect to have three zeros. So how do we get from three factors to a polynomial? You distribute. So we're going to use FOIL. But remember, these first two factors are conjugates. So we can FOIL those quickly. Since they're conjugates, they become the first term squared minus the second term squared. And then we keep that 5x minus 4. So we have x squared minus 36i squared. Now remember that i squared is negative 1. So that first set of conjugates becomes x squared plus 36. And now we have to multiply that times the 5x minus 4. Use FOIL. So our first term becomes 5x cubed. The outer is minus 4x squared. The inner is a plus 180x. And the last is negative 144. So here we went from having two zeros. We found the third zero with the conjugate zeros theorem. We wrote them as linear factors, and then we just multiplied those factors together to get that degree three polynomial. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful, and I hope you'll go check out some of my other math videos.